Hi, this is Dr. Paul. Welcome to another episode of Ask Your Pediatrician. The topic for today is how could this rash be related to chicken pox? What I want to share with you today is just a little history about chicken pox. Now I grew up oh, a few years ago for some of you young whippersnappers and um, back when I was young chicken pox would just go through a community so when I got it all my friends got it all my siblings got it we all used to get chicken pox it's a highly contagious disease that is very rare these days here in the United States so the reason for that is that we are now vaccinating for chicken pox and if you have children you may have had to make this decision should I vaccinate my child against chicken pox or not. In the standard recommended schedule, most doctors are recommending you do this vaccine at a year of age. Some parents are choosing to wait a little longer. Uh, there is a thinking that perhaps if my child gets chicken pox naturally, they'll have lifelong immunity. That thought is actually fairly accurate. Uh, it turns out when we first started doing the chickenpox vaccine, we thought it would give lifelong immunity and it did not. So we ended up adding the recommendation for a booster shot of chickenpox, which is now on the routine schedule. Now I have a lot of families in my practice who want to see if their child could get natural immunity by getting chickenpox, the disease, and therefore not need to worry about this lifelong immune issue. What ends up happening in reality, because there's such great herd immunity, meaning that the community is so protected because everybody's getting their vaccines, that in actual fact, we're just not seeing chickenpox anymore. In fact, doctors coming out of training now, new nurses, sometimes they've never seen a case of chickenpox. And this was something that we all had seen and knew like the back of our hand. So let me describe a little bit what chicken pox looks like if you, if you should have the opportunity to see actual chicken pox. We can make the diagnosis when you find three lesions. It starts off with a tiny red bump. That little bump will develop fluid within it and then it's so itchy that the child will scratch that bump and it's going to crust over. These lesions go through that natural history of going from a red bump to having fluid in it to being crusted over in a matter of a few days. And actually a child can be sick for a week or even a little bit longer because they don't all crop up at the same time. So you'll get a wave of some lesions and back in the day people would have anywhere from 100 to even 500 chicken pox lesions. Hardly ever see this anymore. So that's how chicken pox looks if you get a full-blown case of natural chicken pox. What we're seeing today is very mild cases of chicken pox and they actually look rather atypical. It's a, sometimes you're not even sure is this really chicken pox. But the rash for today that I wanted to show you again and have a take a look at this, this child came into my clinic today and has this cluster of raised, slightly fluid filled, clear looking fluid on a slightly red base, a patch about an inch by an inch and a half on his lower leg. And it's slightly itchy although surprisingly this young man wasn't complaining much about how itchy it was. This is a classic case of herpes zoster or some people will call that shingles. It's interesting the chicken pox virus we call it varicella it also goes by the name of herpes zoster especially when it comes as a recurrence it's in the herpes family of viruses. Now shingles this herpes zoster reinfection is kind of curious the virus and it's known that this can happen from natural disease or even from a vaccinated child you can develop a herpes zoster reinfection and it always will come up in a specific dermatome now i'm going to show you look at this chart right here and you will see a diagram of dermatomes and you can look and see that this particular rash would fall into the L4 dermatome. That means in the spinal cord down in the lumbar area L4 in the nerve root that's where the chickenpox virus has been just hanging out I guess until it's time to uh, cause some mischief in the form of shingles or herpes zoster. So just thought this would be an interesting and instructive case in what herpes zoster looks like. Uh, in some older folks, this particular reinfection can be extremely painful and very itchy at times. We do know, as in this child from today, that you can get herpes zoster or shingles 
just from having been immunized. We once thought when we first were doing these vaccines, we were hoping that the vaccine would prevent herpes zoster. Turns out you can get zoster whether you had natural chickenpox or you were immunized against chickenpox. So just to tell you one thing about the management of chickenpox, there is generally no treatment. Now there are people who are immunocompromised. If you catch this illness early, it can be treated with an antiviral medication, but in general, uh, most people are going to get over this infection uh, with very little complication. It is not an entirely harmless illness and in fact in patients who are immunocompromised, we're talking about someone who might have HIV or maybe they're immunosuppressed for cancer therapy or even perhaps severe asthmatics who are on uh, large doses of oral steroids. This can suppress your immune system and in those individuals chickenpox can actually be quite fatal so it should not be taken lightly. So just another point on vaccinations, just because varicella vaccine can be given and is generally given to children starting at age one, occasionally later. What I would like to mention is this is a live virus vaccine. So this is not a vaccine you're going to give to somebody who's immunocompromised, somebody with HIV, somebody with leukemia or some kind of severe cancer where they're immunosuppressed. And it's also typically not given to pregnant moms. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to click on this link to our latest video.